Hi, I'm Ernie Zor for Pure to Spring Software. Welcome to part two of the official bankruptcy forms demonstration video. I'll pick up where I left off in part one, which is Schedule D, Secured Creditors. I've, I'm going to scroll down a little bit so you can see uh, a complete set of questions. And um, you should note that Schedule D is like Schedule C in that it has a specific set of questions that are simply repeated over and over again. In this demonstration file, there are two vehicle loans, a mobile home loan, and a home mortgage. Now, one feature I want to take advantage of is the Master Creditor Database. Years ago, it was jokingly said that Sears Roebuck was a creditor in every consumer bankruptcy filed. I kind of wonder if the 21st century counterpart is Amazon, but at any rate, for those repeat creditors, you've got the master creditor database to which you can copy new creditors and from which you can paste creditors into the schedules. I'll demonstrate by getting into the, I'll, well, first what I'll do is I want to position my cursor like I have in the name field of the record, and then I'm going to click on the master creditor database button, and then I'm going to copy the first creditor into the database, and I'll do that by clicking on the get creditor button, and you'll see, bang, the creditor that I just entered on Schedule D is placed in the database. And now, for future bankruptcies, I can always paste it in. Uh, and also, I'm not going to have you watch me make all the entries uh, of all these secured creditors. Instead, I'm going to open a file that I prepared for that purpose. Now, one thing I want to mention, we'll get back here on Schedule D, and one thing I want to mention uh, before leaving Schedule D is that if you have more than two creditors, and in one way or another, this goes for all the schedules, you can access blank continuation schedules by using the Add command under the appropriate schedule submenu. And I'm not going to click on it, but there you, I've, I've exposed it there so you can see it in the tree view on the left. Also, the bankruptcy court likes the creditors on a schedule to be alphabetized. So after you've entered your creditors in any order that you want, you can alphabetize them by clicking on the alphabetize creditors command on the options menu. I won't bother with that now because these creditors are already in alphabetical order. So let's move on to schedule EF, priority creditors. And we'll scroll down again so you can see a complete set of questions and the first thing you'll notice is that the set of questions is much like the ones that you saw in Schedule D. The category of priority creditors includes uh, taxing authorities and a few other categories and it's interesting to note that you can use the same master creditor database on this schedule as you did with Schedule D. This would be handy for common priority creditors like the Internal Revenue Service. I'm going to handle this the same as I did with Schedule D, which is after I've entered one creditor like I'm completing right now, I'm going to open up a file with Schedule EF already completed. Now part of Schedule EF is the F part, which are the non-priority creditors, and they're usually the biggest group of creditors. In the file that I just opened, I've got a few non-priority creditors already entered. So in, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep on moving along, and I'm going to assume there are no executory contracts or unexpired leases and no co-debtors, and, and so I'll be able to skip Schedules G and H. And as you're probably aware, a bankruptcy petition and schedules can easily be over 50 pages long, and of course I can't cover them all in detail in this video, but let's quickly go through a couple of the remaining forms. You'll find the data entry process, which is the same for every form, that is tabbing from field to field. It's a very intuitive process. So let's take a, just a quick peek at Schedule I, which is used for listing income. And Schedule J for listing expenses. And I will confess to you that at this point I stopped completing the forms, but ordinarily we would complete the Statement of Affairs. I'll just bring it up on the screen really quick. And the Statement of Attentions. And um, I, the, the Means Test forms.
And, you know, I'm not even going to bring them up, but there are miscellaneous forms like the Social Security Statement, Course Certification, and the Attorney Compensation Form. I'll show you all these forms in the printout. We'll scan through them so you can see them. This voluntary petition is a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, and this version of Official Bankruptcy Forms has the brand new Form 113 Chapter 13 plan. Now, I'm not going to go over it because from a data entry standpoint, it's the same as the forms I just completed. Now, having reviewed the key forms, let's take, let's take a, a moment to talk about electronic filing. It works like this. First, I use the command uh, to print and, and bring up the, the, all the different forms that can be sent uh, or printed. And, and, and what we'll do is we'll, they're already pre-selected, so I'll just click on the print button. And what it'll do is it'll bring up the whole document, all 50 pages plus, in Word. And I'm going to set up Word so I can see two pages at a time. And we'll just page th quickly through so you can see get an idea I'm not, you know we're not going to spend too much time on this the important part is that I'll be able to save it as a PDF file by using the save as command and choosing the PDF file type I'll do it right now having saved that as a PDF file I'm going to create the creditor matrix next. So let's get rid of Word because it's it's a oh well oh wait a minute hold on a second let's take a look at that. What happened there is after I made the PDF file it automatically started Adobe and it let me review it as a PDF file. Okay, good enough. I just wanted to point that out. Let's let's get rid of Word and and Adobe and let's go to make the creditor database uh, not the creditor database but the creditor matrix file and and actually the matrix file is nothing more than an ASCII text file like any one that you would create in Notepad. So uh, I'm going to save it using any name. And uh, what's going to happen here is that it's going to bring it up in Notepad so you can take a quick peek at it. Um, and, and that's about it. Well, I mean, with those two files created, I can now log into my Pacer account, start a new bankruptcy file, and upload the petition in the matrix, which, of course, I'm not going to do in this video. But that's it. And I want to remind you before I leave that the new Puritan Springs book, The Best of Law Office Computing, is now available in paperback. It's got all the best law office computing tips for from years of back issues. And a lot of people that I talk to say that they like the hints and tips that are in The Best of Law Office Computing. So if you're one of those that finds them interesting, you'll find this book is great because it's got all of the best articles in one volume. You can get the ebook at Amazon for only $9 and the paperback version for only $12.99. With that, I'll say goodbye, wish you a great day, and thanks for watching.